SpaceX's Starship is no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. The company went through more than 10 times to get only one successful landing of Starship SN15 from 10 kilometers. Tell me, do you think SpaceX's upcoming first orbital flight can succeed? For me, definitely no, simply because Starship is a new system trying to do unusual things. Even Elon Musk recently admitted that we are proceeding very carefully. If there is a rud on the pad, Starship progress will be set back by approximately six months. So why are so many worried about Starship orbital flight failure? What would happen if a full stack explodes? Let's find out today in this episode of Alpha Tech. Now to make it easier, let's look back at the previous terrifying explosions in the history of rockets of the world, including those previous generation SpaceX rockets. First, one of the biggest rocket explosions ever was the N1 in 1969. The launch took place at 11.18 p.m. Moscow time. For a few moments, the rocket lifted into the night sky, and as soon as it cleared the tower, there was a flash of light and debris could be seen falling from the bottom of the first stage. All the engines instantly shut down except engine number 18. This caused the N1 to lean over at a 45-degree angle and drop back onto the launch pad 110 east. The nearly 2,300 tons of propellant on board triggered a massive blast and shockwave that shattered windows across the launch complex and sent debris flying as far as 10 kilometers or 6 miles from the center of the explosion. The entire rocket contained about 680,000 kilograms or 680 tons of kerosene and 1.78 million kilograms or 1,780 tons of liquid oxygen. Using a standard energy release of 43 megajoules per kilogram of kerosene gives about 29 terajoules for the energy of the explosion, which is about 6.93 kT TNT equivalent. Talking about TNT, TNT equivalent is a convention for expressing energy, typically used to describe the energy released in an explosion. The ton of TNT is a unit of energy defined by that convention, which is 4.184 gigajoules, which is the approximate energy released in the detonation of a metric ton, or 1,000 kilograms of TNT. In other words, for each gram of TNT exploded, 4,184 kilojoules, or 4,184 joules of energy, is released. Investigators later determined that up to 85% of the fuel in the rocket did not detonate, meaning the blast yield was likely no more than 1 kT TNT equivalent. Comparing explosions of initially unmixed fuels is difficult, being part detonation and part deflagration. It also took 18 months to rebuild the launch pad and delayed launches. This was one of the largest artificial non-nuclear explosions in human history and was visible that evening 35 kilometers or 22 miles away at Lenox. After five terrible fires, the N1 program was suspended in 1974 and officially canceled in 1976. Well, Super Heavy and Starship hold significantly more fuel with more energy than was contained in Soviet N1. Just imagine. Now let's talk about a big explosion of the Falcon 9 in 2016. This explosion occurred during preparation for the static fire test of the rocket's engines. No one was injured, according to SpaceX. The blast reportedly shook buildings several miles away. The company confirmed the loss of the Falcon 9 an hour later. Assuming it was fully filled, the Falcon 9 contained around 160 tons of RP-1 as its fuel, only 16% of the fuel mass than the full Starship stack, and it combusted not all at once, but during two explosions and burned afterward. Finally, consider the most powerful rocket in operation now, Falcon Heavy. With 27 engines, three main boosters that can ostensibly land themselves after delivering a payload to space. SpaceX is bringing serious firepower to blast a rocket of that size into space. Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO, even said there will be the equivalent of 4 million pounds of TNT on the launch pad, which will generate 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. That's as much explosive power as a tactical-grade nuclear weapon, around 1.8 kilotons. According to an animation released by SpaceX approximately 90 minutes before launch, SpaceX's launch director will give the go-ahead to load up the rocket with fuel. The rocket's fuel, a mix of rocket-grade kerosene known as RP-1 and liquid oxygen, is highly flammable. In other words, if the launch is unsuccessful, the rocket could explode with the force of a nuclear weapon. 
Obviously, if Starship blows up, it would result in much larger and longer duration conflagrations than those. And now we calculate specific for one Starship explosion by looking up the energy released by burning one kilogram of the fuel mixture. According to a tweet from Elon Musk, the total amount of fuel should equal 4,800 tons with 78% being oxygen, 22% being methane. The amount of energy released from methane could be found here. He chose the gross value recommended by this. The energy released from one kilogram of methane, therefore, should be equal to 55,384 kilojoules. Using this, we can calculate the total energy to be around 1 TNT seems to be equal to 4.184 gigajoules, meaning we can calculate that TNT equivalent to be, that's a really, really huge number. While fully fueled Saturn V exploding on the pad would have released the energy equivalent of 2 kilotons of TNT or 8.4 terajoules, to improve safety, the Saturn Emergency Detection System, or EDS, inhibited engine shutdown for the first 30 seconds of flight. The Hiroshima bomb had a TNT equivalent of around 15 kilotons of TNT. You talk about residual fire. In estimation of the fireball from Saturn vehicles following failure on the launch pad, it was noted that high probability that in the event of a Saturn low altitude failure, large quantities of uncombusted RP-1 fuel would rain on the launch pad, creating residual pools that would burn until long after the fireball disappeared. These fires would prevent ground crews, including rescue personnel, from accessing the area, potentially with disastrous consequence. Starship, on the other hand, doesn't have any ambient temperature liquid fuels. This can have both positive and negative spins. On one hand, all fuel would quickly evaporate in the event of a failure, eliminating the possibility of residual fires. However, this evaporation also increases the likelihood that the expanding fuel cloud could ignite, increasing the size and intensity of the fireball. It would likely be the most powerful artificial non-nuclear explosion in the history of the human race. If Starship is crewed, it's unlikely that any launch escape system would be able to safely protect passengers from the destructive force of that explosion. As such, the probability of a launch failure must be brought down to less than zero. This undertaking, lowering the probability of fault, possesses immense engineering challenges and will likely be one of the most difficult aspects of humankind's road to the Red Planet. And that about wraps it up for today's episode don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks. We'll see you next time.